don't give it back. That's extortion. Even worse, people were being emailed death threats to the executives and the families riddled with expletives. Here are just a couple of the cleaner ones. Quote, the revolution is coming. The family members of your executives are not safe. Your blood will run in the streets in the coming months. Quote, all of the executives and their families should be executed with piano wire around their necks. My greatest hope. If you thought terrorizing children was bad, well, things are even worse in Europe. Let me show you your future. You might consider this a peek at our future. In England, anti-capitalist group called Bank Bosses are criminals claimed responsibility for a home attack on the former CEO of the Royal Bank of Scotland. In France, the French and French are abducting their former employees or em employers through something called boss napping. Fired workers are looking for better severance or whatever else they might want. And they are grabbing these executives and holding them hostage. Here's the best part, only in France, the police aren't even stepping in to stop them. They're basically saying, well, that's just part of the negotiation process. What? Why is that happening? Who's behind this? Surprise, surprise, the unions, the workers of the world, unite. Gee, haven't I seen that someplace before? Oh, I, I remember. Yeah. There's the AIG rally in uh, New York, outside the uh, evil executive homes there, also in Connecticut with the mob rule. And, and the burning of the tires, that's happening in France. All three of those were orchestrated here in America and in France by unions. But before we let our own government and their henchmen sow the seeds of mob rule, I want to look past France, look past England, and look to the past. I personally think a brief history lesson is in order. Joining me now is uh, Robert Galately. He's a history professor at Florida State University, author of a great book, Lenin, Stalin, and Hitler. Um, Robert, I have to tell you, I read your book, when did it come out, about a year and a half ago? Correct. Yeah, I read your book, That's and right. for the last couple of weeks, I keep seeing these scenes, and I'm like, gosh, I've seen these seeds before. And I couldn't remember where it was. This morning I'm in a meeting and I remember and I said to the staff, Lenin, Le uh, Lenin Stalin and Hitler. I am not comparing, and I doubt you are too, I'm not comparing what's currently going on in our administration or in Washington on either side with these guys. But I see echoes of the past that frighten me. Um, we are, let me, let, me, let, me start, let me start you off on this one. Didn't the mobs under Lenin go in and kill all the farmers? And so you didn't have anybody that could actually run farms or run businesses. And that's kind of what we're doing with AIG. We're going in after these people. We're not killing them, thank God, but we're going in after them. And we won't have anybody left in our financial industry to help us. True or false, Robert? Well, that's true. Uh, in fact, the um, uh, Russian Revolution... Uh, took a full-scale attack on the uh, on the banks and on the economic system, on the uh, um, civil service, uh, on the everything that kept the country going at all. Uh, it went into complete collapse very quickly. Um, the government thought of banning money. Uh, then, of course, they went out into the countryside and um, took people's property away and redistributed it. And it was, of course, a catastrophe which ended in 1920, well, it ended in Civil War, civil war and in 1920 led to a, a horrible famine, which, um, thanks to the United States, which intervened um, and saved many lives, but it was a dreadful business. And there's no doubt about it that uh, the, this full-scale, uh, uh, any kind of a full-scale assault, assault on the best and uh, the people who can run the economy and take care of agriculture, um, it's bound to lead to a horrible conclusion. Okay. And has historically. I mean, it... Robert, is it, is it too crazy to say, well, no, I mean, who, well, wasn't it Churchill? Those who, who, those who haven't uh, read history are destined to repeat it. Who was it that said that? <laughs> um, I, it, it, that these, these things are, it, it, it's with Mussolini, it's with Lenin, it's with Stalin, it's with Hitler. The same kinds of things happen. And I'm seeing a lot of the same kinds of things where manufactured crowds like here in the United States, these unions are, are stepping to the plate and, and putting on shows, but the American people are like, oh wow, look at the average person is protesting and they're demonizing 
the rich. I mean, f the rich industrialists were the cause and the problem in Germany. They were the cause and the problem in Russia, and they had to be eliminated. That, you're absolutely right. I mean, this was a, a road to uh, disaster. There's no doubt about it that at a time of uh, social anxiety such as we have now, uh, where a lot of people are worried about how they're going to keep their lives together, where they see their savings going the down the drain, where they feel cheated by the economic system, where they're looking at the stock market every single day, uh, not one, you know, not having even any money invested in it, perhaps, but thinking about it as a barometer for how uh, for their own well-being and how they're doing. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, a lot of people can play on those uh, emotions and sentiments, yeah. and it's not a helpful thing. It right. not, really is not helpful. And, and real quick, um, it was, I mean, uh, there was a legal rev a revolution in, in Germany, and uh, that's the one I think I see before it got nasty. The, uh, the, the big guys, all the big companies and everything else, just like here, they were all for it. And they were like, yeah, yeah, because it, they thought it was going to help them, and then it was too late to pull out. And it was more of a legal revolution. Revolution, right? That is absolutely correct. And compared to the Russian Revolution, which is unbelievably violent and bloody, right. the Nazi Revolution was uh, legal, and we have to put it in quotation marks. But uh, basically, he was appointed as the Chancellor of Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, gradually, was uh, made himself made his way into a position of a dictator. He was voted in all the way. He reduced the civil service uh, all through laws or pseudo laws or you know what passed for laws. Right. And uh, really, there was almost no resistance. It was made incredibly difficult to resist because everything looked so legal. And uh, one morning, people woke up and uh, you know months only months had passed, and the whole thing had. Uh, was too already too late. Robert, I thank you very much, and, and uh, I'd love to have you on and spend some more time with you. America. The book is Lenin, Stalin, and Hitler. It, this is a, I think it's out in soft cover now. It's about a year, year and a half old. Please read this book. I, it, I read it uh, when it first came out, and it's I, all of a sudden it came to me here the last couple of days because it's it's all happening again. I'm not saying that these people. Are, are in our horizon, but let me tell you something, it's spooky, the similarities on how it's used. All right, um, there are all kinds of building projects that have been uh, started, the so-called stimulus package.